Alright, what's up guys? Mike here from Ultra Reality Games. Wow, voice is cracked hard. But we're here with Robbie Cole here, who uh, was here on Vanguard Top 16. Yeah, How you doing, Robbie? Good. So, uh, we're gonna go into your Shadow Paladin deck, the master of shadows himself. Uh, I actually ended up losing in Top 16, but uh, let's have some fun here. <laughs> uh, so we are playing Judge Bell. Um, we have tested David as a card. Um, it's not that good. Um, my issue with David as a starter as opposed to Judge Bow is your early to mid game is trash. Um, just your overall subpar card choices that you have to generate. Um, not playing Judge Bow uh, just to get off of subpar aura geyser that doesn't thin your deck by four cards that goes plus three uh, when Judge Bow himself here uh, resolves, which is very critical in most stages of the game. Uh, because if this card doesn't resolve, you're not necessarily in a bad position, but Judge Pow either forces two cards out of your opponent's hand uh, to guard, or um, you deck thin by four uh, and go plus three, which is ridiculous, all for just one counter blasting, uh, which is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, so, best starter. Um, my trigger lineup is eight criticals. Um, I don't want to mess with these ratios. Um, five draw, seven crit, not good. Uh, my draw trigger is actually Howell. Um, we were debating on taking this back out for the Revenger draw. The issue that we had with that, though, um, was we needed this in the soul because we are playing Darkheart. Um, and most times in game state, when you're progressing it, uh, that extra 3,000 can help make a column, uh, which is impor very important for hitting 21 columns against 11k vanguards. Um, also, uh, it's a subpar retiring unit. Uh, this combined with another grade one usually will get you uh, so just pretty much where you want to be. 11k columns early on in the game, very important. And then uh, four heal triggers, uh, wrapping up the trigger lineup. Just don't want to lose the game. This is... Yeah. Heals are very important. I wish I could play more. But um, grade ones, uh, once again... Uh, we're playing this over Karma Collector. Uh, yes, I do like just being able to unflip damage with Karma Collector, uh, but we were watching uh, Bart. Um, he's actually won two of the Circuit Series events um, playing Kagura. Uh, we knew entering into this event that he is a very good player, um, so we made the choice in our build uh, to make sure that we had something that could protect against rear guard attacks, um, and we chose to go with Maclear uh, just because of that reason. So, one player made this decision for us, which is very interesting when you think about the uh, aspect of game, uh, but because of one matchup, um, we took the subpar card choice uh, just to make sure that that one matchup is particularly easier. Um, two dark card. Uh, this card is only played strictly because of the mirror match. Um, in the mirror match, uh, when you would go to resolve your effect, um, if most of you don't know, uh, this card is pretty much a blowout in the mirror. Uh, this deck's worst matchup is itself. Uh, because most of our effects retire or require us to retire things. Um, and if we're left with only two units, um, Blaster Dark Abyss can pop back row. Uh, Blaster Dark Revenger can hit front row. Um, so, like I said, our worst matchup is ourselves. Uh, so this combined with Maka, uh, after we attack with our Restander that requires us to retire three, uh, puts another two units on the board, uh, which is very important in combo. Um, just making sure that you can get that fourth or fifth attack in. Uh, depending on your setup and scenario. Uh, but like I said, very important for the mirror. Uh, I also found this to be good outside of the mirror. Um, a couple of times just uh, needed deck thinning, just call from hand. Uh, two Sword Breaker. Uh, this combos with Judge Bow, as we said. Um, this card is terrible if you draw it. I wish it was 7k, it would alleviate a lot of the problems. Uh, but you don't want to play more of this. Um, if you draw this, I mean sucks to suck but life happens um, three masquerade oh this was another internal struggle uh, we wanted to play four masquerade and two dorant uh, but we found that this early game as an attacker um, especially calling it off of our one of grim recruiter um, after attacking with the column uh, this lets us attack a front row unit which forces another card from the opponent's hand uh, which is extremely important as well. Um, it forces another resource from your opponent's hand. It's another relevant known uh, as you're playing the game and game state's progressing, as I said. Um, just knowing one more card that your opponent has as a resource, uh, that's an, not an unknown, uh, makes attacking and minimizing columns a lot easier. Um, and as I said, Dorant is an overall combo piece, though. 
Uh, as an early game attacker, it's 7k. Um, I will throw this down turn one to ensure that I can get the extra damage in on my opponent, or the extra card out of their hand. Um, this card's relevance doesn't come until mid to late game. Uh, outside of that, though, there's absolutely no real reason uh, that you wouldn't want to call this out and attack. Uh, if not, you can set up early 16 columns with this, uh, which is also really important. Now we're going to get into the little bit more boring stuff. A little less techy now. Dude, we're blasted our stuff. Four... Abyss. Yeah. And four of my avatar, uh, Blaster Dark Revenger. Um, so, in testing, this is beautiful. We were talking about cutting this card um, and testing the Japanese build. Um, in testing, Mac Heart, I know a lot of people are going to get mad at me for saying this, but Mac Heart is a card that is only good when you're behind in game state. Um, yeah, Mac card is good for deck thinning and clearing the uh, typical uh, Revenger builds, uh, but another issue that a lot of people don't seem to give this deck credit for is this deck's pure goal is aggro. And that's one of the things I know a lot of new Shadow Paladin players um, kind of discount it. Because when you're playing the David or Geyser build, the issue you run into is your early to mid game is terrible. You have an amazing late game. But the issue is, is when you're playing and you want to put pressure on your opponent, early game forcing your opponent to make bad calls in their guards uh, really will make your life a lot easier. Um, also, depending on certain situations, uh, Blaster Dark is just two counter blasts to retire a unit, which is also very important. Stay thirsty, my friends. I am. So, also, uh, Abyss, uh, it's just standard to play four of it. Um, there's absolutely no other reason. Um, popping starters in the mirror match. Um, also, playing this deck in the mirror, it's a multi-layered mirror match. Um, it's also one of the more interesting uh, matchups in the game. Um, just as an example here. So, in the mirror, you have to be worried about three things um, as the game state progresses. If your Judge Bow dies, you have to worry about your opponent's Judge Bow. If you kill their Judge Bow, you can let your Judge Bow resolve. If both Judge Bows are destroyed, uh, then game stage is determined at that point by what's in your hand. Um, and it's really interesting because this one card dictates the mirror match. Only because of speed and deck thinning and resources like that. And as an old Yu-Gi-Oh player, uh, crunching numbers and deck calculation, uh, it was one of the things I enjoyed about gadgets the most was, you know, six gadgets. All right, my ratios for 42 cards are this percentage and so forth. Um, but getting the out to this in the mirror is extremely crucial. And as I said, it, it's multi-layered. Uh, and it's very intriguing that just taking this out can make your life so much easier or so much worse. And then also, for my last grade two here, uh, Triple Maka. Uh, we talked about earlier, uh, this is just a combo piece for the mirror uh, with this. Uh, we used to play the 12K Masquerade. Uh, but we decided to cut this out for Maka, only on that specific reasoning. And counterblasting one for another unit's free. Uh, those are the grade twos. Our grade threes, uh, Triple Mordred. Um, we did test the one of Blaster Dark Diablo. Uh, the issue that we personally had with it was, if the 1% chance that I draw it and Judge Bow is up on my Vanguard, first off, it's not going to resolve. Um, you're basically playing a card at that point in the game uh, that you're trying to combo with this uh, to retire a unit, which is not that good. Um, the Generation Break 2 effect is good because I can pitch anything in my hand at that point, uh, but the Break Right effect is still relevant. Um, a lot more important than it needs to be. Um, swinging for 37 against certain decks as opposed to uh, just, you know, 27, uh, just more cards out of their hand. And if your opponent's sitting at six cards in hand, um, just swinging for the 37 is a lot more relevant. And then, of course, the Heat Deer Resistance, uh, the four dragons. Um, once again, this is pretty much your central piece in the deck outside of your extra deck, uh, which we'll get into now. So, extra deck. Madurp. So, Madurp here. Um, if you are in Legion, no one seems to understand this ruling. So, here's just a quick explanation for this. So, I am in Legion. I stride. Uh, this card's effect says if I have a heart that is 9,000, I can pick up a grade 3 from my drop zone and put it into my hand. Uh, people think that you have to stride over the 9k to gain this effect. That is not the case. You just have to be in Legion 
to gain this effect. So you stride over the 11k, but both cards are your heart. So you have met the requirements for this effect to resolve. So enjoy your free card. Uh, it's only a one-off. Uh, one Grim Recruiter. Um, this card is amazing. Uh, I want to cut the next card uh, for more, but you have to play this card. So this is Aura Guys that I was talking about earlier. This card is absolutely shit. Um, only on the premises of the only time I want to go into this card is against Link Joker. Um, I can't let my opponent lock any of my units. Um, the premises of this is just to make sure that I can attack, kill my units, generate more card advantage. Uh, the thing that compared to David and Judge Bow is if you retire David as a generation break one, you're only going to go plus one. You're still going to deck thin by two, but that's not going to matter in the long run because overall this just gives you more results. Uh, this is still an extremely good card, but when you're trying to net results, uh, this is just better for combo. And then the last part of the deck is uh, secondary win con. Uh, this guy, this card is extremely broken, forcing your opponent not to be able to guard. Um, it, it's just the, the stone nuts. So, outside of the deck though, or the extra deck, uh, the deck might look very vanilla on paper, and uh, to the people that really hate the deck, uh, the level of playability that is needed for this deck is extremely high. Uh, like I said, especially entering into the mirror match, um, having to maintain all of, you know, just the constants that are needed for that and um, knowing which part in the game to make the correct play um, is very difficult as well. Outside of just your standard Saki draw triggers and things like that that happen. So there's not much else I can say about this. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, real quick, just if you think so. Uh, yeah. What kind of uh, what were your matches on day one? Um, I took a two round bye. I figured I'd earned it. Um, take my two hours of sleep. Um, I actually played against brawlers. Um, I've only tested against Brawlers three times in my life. Um, the deck is extremely good. Um, the issue that I have with Brawlers, though, is if they attack my board before I resolve my sack effects, then I'm going to have an issue. Um, also, I like to play aggressively. Um, coming out of the Floodgate turn one uh, can really put a lot of players on tilt, um, and it's kind of interesting uh, because on a typical first turn, um, I'm very noted for this. Like If I draw the Zero Shield turn one, I'm going to ride it. Uh, this is 11k by itself. If I've got a Dorant, out it goes. Um, it's just about making sure that my opponent's resources are minimal as the game progresses. Um, I don't want my opponent to have triggers the later that the game progresses. Um, uh, some other stuff I played against, I actually played against uh, Sam and the Shadow Mirror. Um, it was really disappointing because uh, Sam's a really good guy. Uh, but I opened up unplayable. I bricked really hard and it was, it was really disappointing. I guess I wanted to play Sam on a really good level, but you can't do that when your hands are very subpar and your opponent's, um, you your judge bow's dead and theirs is resolving. So you're just like, oh, well, I'm, I'm losing. I'm going to lose even harder now. Um, outside of that, um, what else did I play? To be honest, I don't remember. Um, it was, oh, Alco Force as well. Alco Force is another deck that you want to rush. Um, you can't play their game. Um, their game is late game. Five attacks and you're done. Like, go home. Um, if you early push them to three or four damage, um, it'll make your life easier with your restander um, to make sure that you can actually get that final damage in, uh, which is very important as well. Um, outside of that, um, your Dragonic Overlord, the X matchup, or Kagura, a uh, very interesting matchup as well. Um, like we discussed earlier, that's why you play Maclear, uh, to ensure that the end can't resolve. Um, and to make sure that the resources are minimal um, at that game state. All right, time for filthy plugs and shout outs. Uh, shout outs to all of my friends, uh, Austin Quintana, uh, Billy Fulfer, uh, Justin Stiver for helping us, uh, help me test this deck. Um, discussed a lot of theory with my friends. Um, Realms Games and uh, No Limit Gaming. Uh, Realms is my locals I go to play. Uh, no Limit is the store that I work with, of course. Um, very good people. And honestly, without them, this game wouldn't be as fun. So, and uh, shameless self plug for Vanguardians. Uh, if you guys aren't in that Facebook group, I don't know what to tell you. You're missing news. Oh, and shout out to my boy, Will. My boy, William Cole. Yeah, Justin! Woo! Oh, and
and the scotch. Nobody likes scotch. And scotch. No one likes scotch. The other guy. <laughs> right. and oh, and and my homeboy. Austin. Yeah, what up, homegirl? What up, Steeler? And uh, you tell our guys at home to play hard or go home. Play hard or go home. That's why you play this.